In this intro video, I'm going to explain the key differences between the upland and lowland south. And so we'll think of the south as one area. Most people can think of it. It's the south. Uh, but actually, it's much more than that. It's much more complex. And there's two main groups or two main regions of the south we're going to look at. The upland south and the lowland south. And obviously, there's the physical differences between the two. One, obviously, more upland or interior, where the other one is more lowland or coastal. But there's also some cultural differences. Uh, in economic differences that we'll discuss as well. So I might not come out and say, hey, this is a big key difference between the upland and lowland south, but as we progress through this chapter, they should become quite clear. So let's begin by looking at what is the upland south. And the upland south is going to include three different subregions, beginning with over here in the east, along the Appalachian Mountains, the aptly named Southern Appalachians. Uh, I'll also refer to this particular area as Appalachia. To the west of the southern Appalachians is the interior low plateau, and as the name implies, low, this is going to be part of the central lowlands area uh, that dominates much of the Midwest and Great Plains. Uh, this is also going to include southern Indiana, and so southern Indiana, a good amount of Kentucky, and middle Tennessee are all part of the interior low plateau, and so physically, there's a lot of similarities, climate, a lot of similarities between the interior low plateau, between areas areas in Tennessee and southern Indiana, but also culturally. And I'll explain those when I get to that particular section. You go over to the west, we have the Ozark Wichita region, also known as the Interior Highlands. And as the name implies, this is going to be more of an upland feature. So the Interior Highlands and the southern Appalachians were actually formed from the same mountain building event. However, they've been separated over time by the Mississippi River. And so the Interior Highlands is going to include a good amount of Arctic Arkansas, uh, southern Missouri, but even a little bit of eastern Oklahoma. We go to the lowland south. The lowland south, there's going to be two particular areas we're going to look at. Uh, the first one is called the southeastern Piedmont and Atlantic Coastal Plain. Uh, this is going to include the big cities of Atlanta, Charlotte, uh, Richmond, uh, and it's going to extend as far north as Washington, D.C., which I would argue is uh, one of the most southern uh, Atlantic coastal cities there found in the foundry. Uh, also, we're going to include the various beaches, a lot of them that you might go to, like Myrtle Beach, uh, maybe Charleston or the Outer Banks, Virginia Beach. Uh, we'll discuss how those suckers formed and also some key concerns. Next up, we'll look at the Mississippi River Valley and Gulf Coastal Plain, the other area of the lowland south that we're going to investigate. And this is going to include Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Southern Alabama, and the Panhandle of Florida. Uh, also going to include New Orleans. Uh, but key to this, as the name implies, Mississippi River Valley, it's going to stretch up all the way up here uh, as the Mississippi River moves its way. And so this is actually going to extend up into Tennessee and a good amount of Arkansas. This particular area of the lowland south kind of juts up because of the Mississippi River being located through here, winding its way, meandering through uh, this particular area of the lowland south. One region I will not cover in this particular section of the lowland south is the Florida Peninsula. Now, there's no doubt the Florida Peninsula, a good amount of it is very southern. In fact, as they say in Florida, as you go north, the more southern it is. And this is a particular area like Gainesville, Ocala, in which it's very similar to Georgia. However, because the islands is a lightly covered area, I'm going to go ahead and put the Florida Peninsula, and I'm going to cover it later in the semester, later in the uh, course when we look at the islands and look at the very much the touristy beach areas uh, of, of Florida. So, you know, when we think about Daytona Beach, Clearwater, Fort Myers, it's going to have a lot more similarities with Miami than it is with middle of nowhere South Carolina or Mississippi, like northern Florida is.